going to integrate the value of our work, what we bring to the table, but also who we are. And that's not about becoming someone else. It's not about transforming into someone else. We are not right now. We already are that being. It's just like we want to bring the best pieces of it to the surface and we also want to step deeper into our untapped potential which is really limitless. Hello and welcome to the Mind Your Leadership podcast. I'm Karen Zook and today I'm honored to speak with Regina Huber. Regina is the CEO of Transform Your Performance. Regina's remarkable journey began in Germany leading into a pivotal roles at BCG in ownership of businesses spanning five continents, including Argentina, Brazil, and the U.S. Regina is not just a leader. She's a multicultural transformational leadership coach, international inspirational speaker, and the author of the empowering book, Speak Up, Stand Out, and Shine. With a passion of driving bold, value-driven, and heart-centered leadership, Regina has developed four groundbreaking coaching frameworks. Join us as Regina tells us more about them and we delve to the essence of leadership. So Regina, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for joining. I am delighted to be here with you. Thank you for having me. And you know, Regina, before the conversation, before our episode, you sent me your bio before the show and it ends with... This sentence, Regina has a passion for travel and dance, and she loves inspiring others to express their brilliance and live a freaking amazing life. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what led you up to becoming a transformational leadership coach, and what's your path that brought you to this point that you can share with us? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for this question. Yes, I want everybody to live that freaking amazing life. And that's not always a perfect life. You know, not, not everything is always going perfectly. We all have our challenges, but it's a life that is worth living and that is true to our values and to who we are, right? So, yes. So what led me up to uh, founding this business, creating this uh coaching, training, and speaking business, Transform Your Performance. Well, this business, Transform Your Performance, and who I am today is really a result of my eclectic experience on several continents and of living in different countries and cultures, studying holistic modalities, and also learning through you know, learning a bunch of lessons through my passion for dance, actually. You mentioned that too. And all of this has shaped me into who I am today. I grew up on a farm in a tiny little village in Germany as the shyest kid in the village. But I also always had this adventurous spirit inside of me, and that really pushed me out into the world. And I had this curiosity. I wanted to explore the world, discover. And I've always been passionate about freedom, which to me really includes the freedom to move around and to explore. And uh, as you said earlier, I held leadership roles at uh, the Boston Consulting Group in several different locations around the world. I also had created and managed my own businesses in Argentina and Brazil in Latin America. And when I moved to New York City in 2012, I was trying to figure out what to do with all this eclectic experience, this adventurous experience on several continents, first at BCG and then uh, as a business owner in, in Argentina and Brazil. And all those experiences in different countries where I had traveled to, with the different cultures where I'd lived in, and, and all of this, right? And, and the transformational stories I'd been a part of, my languages that I had studied, etc. And I was looking at all this diverse experience, and I wanted to do something meaningful with it, something that would be aligned with who I had become and who I was deep down, and also make a difference for my future clients and in the world, also as not just as a coach, but also as an inspirational speaker. 
right? And um, I wanted to have that satisfaction and fulfillment, but I also wanted other people to enjoy satisfaction and fulfillment in their careers. And that's how I decided to work with employees for the most part, uh, but most importantly, leaders, right? So they could also be business owners. I've worked with business owners as well. Most of my clients have been employees. And um, so I wanted to do this in my, my very, very own way, using all my previous experiences and coming up with a very unique and very holistic approach. And this is how Transform Your Performance was born. And you know, while I was listening, was listening to you, something like a question popped in my mind. Do you have an epiphany moment that you went through and you said something in a situation in your life, an event that made you have this epiphany moment that said, okay, this is what I want. This is what I need to do. Or it came like a, it was a natural path or something mm -hmm. like sparked you. Well, I was pushed a little bit. It was maybe not an epiphany moment because it was a process to get a clarity finding process when I moved to New York City. However, the reason I moved was because of a not so pleasant experience in Brazil, where I lived before New York City, in Rio de Janeiro, where I had a very painful experience with a business partner who uh, basically embezzled money and defrauded me and this is what led me to leave brazil eventually and decide to move to new york i've been living in the u.s before but not on the east coast i was in san francisco on the west coast now after that i'd lived in, in argentina three and a half years and in brazil three and a half years right this, these were actually the second times i had moved to those two countries and uh when I moved to New York City, I, I really wanted to do something, something that was, again, aligned with my passion, because what I had been doing as a business owner in Brazil was certainly also aligned with my passion, but it was completely different. It was a brick and mortar business. And now I didn't really want to do a brick and mortar business anymore. I wanted to be more mobile again, because I'm a little bit of a nomad. <laughs> I love to move around in the world and travel. And uh, this is how, how it all came about. However, at first I was actually considering, because of my passion for dance, I was considering working with performing artists, which I actually did as well in the beginning. And then gradually I transferred into a different target audience with most of my clients being women, but not all. Okay. And this came about, Karen, through the networking I was doing, because I had to build a brand new network from scratch in New York City. I didn't really have a network there. So I went to lots of networking events. These networking opportunities and activities also served me as a clarity finding tool because I was refining my message. I was also really now gradually defining what exactly I wanted to do in terms of coaching. And you know, another thing that came to my mind while you were speaking is the body aspect. If this, mm -hmm. I would be happy to delve into it a little bit because, you know, in my journey at the beginning, I know now in hindsight that I was disconnected from my body and, you know, I didn't understand. I, I was going to retreat to my teacher and I said, okay, why, why do I need to be connected to my body? Okay, now I, I understand. But it's interesting for me also for the listener to understand how, what's the importance of our body in increasing our self-awareness, in having these transformational experiences. Actually, how do you use the body in order to transform uh, people and to help them transform? Yes, absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, dance has taught me a lot of lessons about this and also about leadership, by the way, and teamwork. So many business lessons are in dance. However, you know, specifically about the body aspect, yes, it's so important in, in business presence and leadership presence or executive presence. I've written about this a few times in, in magazines. We often talk about executive presence and it's very, it's an intangible thing in a way. It's hard to really grasp what it is. And I think we can describe it in so many ways, but one element that is often neglected is our body in it and our energy. And those are of course connected, they are not separate. That's why I believe that energy and body 
or as I call it, a body and energy conscious presence in one of my frameworks. It's, it's one of the pillars of one, one of my frameworks, actually, a body and energy conscious presence, um, has a very, very important role in our business presence. How we show up with our energy, we can optimize our energy before we go into a meeting, before we go into a job interview or into a speaking situation, whatever the situation is, a negotiation, right? And I also share some of those energy optimization tools and other tools to feel more secure and more confident in those situations in my book, Speak Up, Stand Out and Shine. They are little tricks and techniques that we can use also to really raise our confidence for those situations. For now, example, give, give us one tip for raising our consciousness and confidence with our body. Before going yes, before absolutely. Absolutely. It's very, very simple sometimes to do that. And a lot of times it has to be simple because otherwise we don't remember how to do it or we don't have enough time. One example you probably already know and a lot of our listeners know, and it's cow posing. Amy Cuddy talks about it in her TED Talk. Now, I personally prefer power dancing just because I love dance. And there was actually also an article about this. Uh, there was a feature about this concept in a Forbes article a, a few years ago. Now, that's one example. So you would choose a, a tune that really is high vibe to you and dance to it. Now, of course, we can't always do that in all the settings, right? Sometimes we are called into a meeting and we got to optimize our energy really quickly. Now, what you can do once you have practiced it a few times, I would say it's really quick, okay? You can really focus on bringing up energy through your legs, your entire body and stop at your solar plexus area because your, your stomach area, your solar plexus area is the area where it's easiest for most people to really tap into their confidence feeling. So you would breathe, you would focus on this, on this area, maybe place a hand onto it and then breathe into this area and feel that energy, that personal power energy that you have inside of you. Because as you know, what you focus on expands yep. and then you can imagine it. Imagination and visualization are powerful tools, right? We can imagine it with our eyes closed coming up through the top of our head and surrounding us mm -hmm. as if we were surrounded by a beautiful, powerful or power energy bubble rather. Mm -hmm. And this simple exercise can help us not just feel more confident, but also enhance our perceived presence. Our posture changes while we do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Automatically. And our energy changes. And that's how we are also seen more easily in a meeting. I love it. Yes, you know, sometimes they're also saying, put up your hands and put it like this, like you go mm -hmm. on a place, like you're increasing your maybe energy feed and self-confidence. It's funny because, you know, I like, I love dancing at home. Like when I'm alone, I'm putting music and starting to dance. I see it's something like it's, it's creating energy. I don't know. It's, it's being a present, right, with whatever comes and being happy and uh, free dancing. Mm -hmm. I I love it sometimes. So, so I think it's an interesting piece because the the body, you know, there's also the the book uh, called "The Body Knows It All." Remember, mm -hmm. you know the, this book. So, our body beyond our mind, beyond the rational aspect, talks, right? Yeah, uh, resonate. Uh, or, present ourselves without words. And I think we are not aware too much of this piece in our presence. Like we're thinking how to say things, how to show up. Sometimes we need to dress accordingly, but yeah. the way we, we are connected to our body and bring, bring it in the day to day, it's have a impactful aspect. This is absolutely right. And I love that you said the body talks, Karen. Because I actually studied a holistic modality called body talk. Oh, and really? what it does, it gives you the priorities. It's a healing modality. Okay. That I studied. I, I love studying these holistic modalities. And I, I did a lot of that in the past. You know, your body does talk. It gives us the healing priorities. 
And in body talk, we use muscle testing, and it's also used in other uh, in other methodologies, right? And the muscle testing gives us the response of the body, the reply from the body, and it tells us what the priority is. We do not diagnose in body talk, for example. We, we just do what the body tells us to do. So we follow the follow sorry those formulas that that specific methodology gives us, but we follow the body's instructions. And mm-hmm. the other meaning of the body talks is, of course, yes, it talks without us saying anything. Whether we say something or not, we always communicate. We communicate through our energy, through our body language, through our posture. And, you know, when we say something and it contradicts our energy and it contradicts our body language, then usually what wins is our energy and the body language. That's what comes through, right? And and not our words. Yeah, it's amazing so because it's, now when you step, spoke, I felt my energy like in the Kundalini and stuff. The passion that you are talking about, it resonated mm-hmm. in my body. So it's interesting to listen to our body while we are talking, mm-hmm. right? And to Absolutely. See what- and it, it connects me to the transformational coaching that you're doing. Can you tell us, elaborate more about what does it mean, transformational coaching? Mm-hmm. How does it look, yeah. the framework and the process? If you, yeah. even if you have an example, it always helps to understand more fully the process. So, In my case, I call it transformational leadership coaching because I work a lot with leaders. It's a combination of different things. It's leadership coaching, it's transformational leadership, and it's transformational coaching, right? So you can dissect the the word in different ways. And I think what makes my coaching approach unique, apart from it being transformational, meaning that we do work on specific situations to resolve those specific challenges that my clients face and 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 need to deal with and overcome and the goals they have and want to achieve of course we do work with those specific situations however we do it in a way that they can have a transformational experience through the coaching process and then take it to the next situation after right so they of course also get the tools and techniques yes for sure and the knowledge but it's also that transformation that happens so they can bring out their best selves and what's actually already inside of them. So we're not going to change the person in any way. It's already there. We're just going to really tap deeper into their potential. And my approach, as I said before, is very holistic because I have a very eclectic experience and I also study holistic modalities. So of course I also bring some of that knowledge into my coaching. One of it being the energy piece, another one being mindset and really going deep with it. So going into the subconscious, holistic modalities teach us about how the subconscious really works and what we can do to get to the more limiting parts and eradicate them and to replace them with more empowering you know, thought patterns, emotional patterns, beliefs, etc. And I think my clients really approach that holistic, uh, uh, sorry, appreciate, <laughs> I wanted to say that holistic approach once they experience it. And some of them have also said in testimonials that they love my multidisciplinary coaching. That's a, sort of another way of saying that. Right. I also believe that what, you know, every coach is unique. Each of us has their own way of doing, and that's how it's exactly meant to be. And I think one of my uniqueness assets is that it's my experience in different countries, different cultures, studying foreign languages. And that's really allowed me to open my horizon and my mind and to understand my diverse clients' needs more easily. So several of them have, for example, said to me in their very first session or conversation, Regina, you really get me. How did you know this about me? Well, part of it, Karen, is intuition, but the other piece is also being exposed to so many different uh, perspectives and, and learning from all of them. And that has made it easier, I believe, to, to understand other people who, from other cultures potentially also, um, you know, more easily and quickly. Can you give us an example that we understand what does it mean 
for people that are listening, what does it mean a transformative process? Like with what uh, needs do I come and how do I, tra- you know, in my last guest, my former guest, I love how she referred to transformational. She said it, it's to transcend the form, change the form that it exists. So I'm yes. curious to understand because I understand the process, but I, I'd be happy if you can capture it by an example of a need that you work with one of your clients and what transformation did he go through this process and how we ended the process, yes. what changes within them all. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of my clients are not 100% clear on what their unique brilliance is. Mm. And I really love to, to encourage and inspire people to step into their unique brilliance. We are so often told, especially women, right? You've got to own your value, but we cannot own it if we don't know it in depth before. So we need to know it, to own it, and then show it. Really embrace it. And here we are again, embody it so that it automatically shines through our presence, through how we show up. And that is a part of the transformation that you asked about. Now, so we really want to integrate the value of our work, what we bring to the table, but also who we are. And that's not about becoming someone else. It's not about transforming into someone else. We are not right now. We already are that being. It's just like we want to bring the best pieces of it to the surface and we also want to step deeper into our untapped potential which is really limitless so oftentimes you know you hear people say you have to step into your full potential i am a wordsmith i always question words because i've studied languages right so i always say you cannot step into your full potential you can step deeper into it because the more you step into your potential the more it expands for you, it becomes bigger every single time. It never ends, right? And and there's a lot to that. And so as you, for example, um, apply that to a specific situation, let's just say you want to negotiate a promotion, okay? Or a, a raise, a pay raise, whatever it is for you. Let's, let's focus on a promotion, okay? I've seen this over and over for clients. So we work on a specific promotion. We... I guide them to really own the value of their work, the value of their experience. That is a transformative process, okay? We do several different exercises, assignments, and also we have conversations about it, deep conversations. Now, as they're going through this, now it's becoming easier to ask for what they want and deserve, okay? So now they do it the first time around, they've had this experience and they have grown through the coaching and through the experience. And now they can do the rinse and repeat. They can do it again on their own. And I think that's the biggest value, you know? I love to inspire people to step into their unique brilliance and into their greatness, as I said before, because that's part of this transformative process. Coaching, is powerful. It changes careers and it changes lives. You take the transformation with you for the rest of your career and life. And that's what it is to me. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because we're working in the same field. But what are you saying? I love it that, first of all, I had a conversation yesterday and one of the people asked me, uh, do you think we need to find ourselves or decide what we want to be and achieve it? And I said, well, we need to, to find ourselves. We need to let it unfold because I think our essence are, is there. But you in life, you know, we adopt a belief system that it's not ours. We please others in order to achieve their love. And we disconnect from ourselves. And I think as I see it as a mindful process and a connected process is to let go, it's like an onion, taking out the pieces and getting to the essence of the onion, right? Because this is who we are and we have such so much mud and leaves between ourselves and ourselves during the, um, our adulthood, right? Because we adopt a lot of things that are, it's not us. And 
it's actually unlearning. It's actually listening deeper to what really I want as Karen, not what my parents want, my colleague want, my husband want, my children. No, what I want, what's important for me, what's my priorities and what's maybe some of my belief system that uh, served me till now, but they are not serving me anymore and I need to let them go. So I did, I think this is the process of finding and tuning in our uniqueness because you know, I think each and every one of us has a present that it brings yeah. to the world. And once we find this present and it's there, then this is our uniqueness. And when we are trying to copy others and to be in competition with others, we won't find our uniqueness, right? Because nobody has our, our uniqueness. We can be inspired by others to see how they dare to write a book or dare to speak a, in front of a big audience. Okay, and I also want to do it so it can inspire me to go achieve my own goals, but not to be like them. So I think it's really important to define and to differentiate between these things and to invite people to dare to go deeper and to meet themselves. And it's also scary, let's be honest, right? It's sometimes you, you meet fear and unpleasant feelings. It's not always a happy, happy joy. What do you Absolutely, think? Absolutely, Karen. I could not agree more. And I love that you use the word essence also because that's a word I lose, use a lot as well. One central question that I ask my clients is, what is it that you really, really want deep down? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people have never answered this question and it's not an easy one to answer for a lot of people, right? Yeah. Including myself, it changes over time. So it's really, really important to be very self-aware Self-awareness is a foundation to self-leadership. And this self-leadership then allows us to direct our careers, our lives, our businesses, depending on what everybody's situation is. There's a self-awareness, as you, as you said, yes, it takes courage. It can be scary sometimes. Because when we look into who we are and how we, how we behave, what we believe, what we say, how we are perceived, you know, all these different aspects of self-awareness, emotional intelligence or the lack thereof, you know, our triggers, then we will discover pieces and elements that we don't really love about ourselves. That's the other part of it. But we also need to focus on what we do love about ourselves. What are those? I call these your unique assets, Karen. So I talk about unique brilliance a lot. And unique assets make up that unique brilliance. It's the conglomerate, the, the unique package, you know, that, that you are. All your gifts, talents, skills, experiences, stories, your, your studies, your, you know, there's a long list of things, personality traits, uh, things that other people value in you, your core values, in, and what do you value in yourself? In all of this, it's a big pack package of things that make up what I call your distinctive uniqueness. The distinctive uniqueness also includes the not so nice things, right? It's, it has both sides of the coin. We must look at both sides of the coin. But when we are working on our confidence, oftentimes we look too much on the negative side, actually. And we look at things that aren't even so important on that, just to call it something on that negative side. It's not really negative in that sense, but it's, it's just the side of the coin where we have some potential to really, the potential for development and improvement. So, you know, a few things came to my mind while you were speaking. First of all, there's mm -hmm. a saying goes that our strengths, it's also our weaknesses usually, mm -hmm. right? So if I love people and I love to work with them, Apparently, maybe I'm also a pleaser of people because I need their love. So it goes together. I think in the process of uh, increasing our self awareness is understanding uh, what's our strength and to work with our weakness in order to strengthen our strength. So it goes together. It doesn't go only negative, also positive. It's all together, and we need to, to nourish it and to understand what's important for us and to have clarity of our priorities and, and how we can strengthen our weaknesses and put our attention on our strengths. Okay, if I'm a people a person, so that's great. So how do I fulfill myself? What do I want to do with it? Another thing you said in this process, I think it's important while we are tuning in deeper to ourselves is to nourish self-compassion because mm -hmm. we're so 
tough and we're so judgmental toward ourselves. So we don't dare to see ourselves because we're judging ourselves all day long. So how can I, I can be in a freeze mode because I don't know, I'm so angry on myself. So I won't be able to act. So this is what I learned during my journey and actually nourished because at the beginning I was so self-criticizing myself. I, I couldn't move. I couldn't watch it look at myself because I hated myself. And during this process, I was more compassionate toward myself. And now I understand that I'm a human being and sometimes I make mistakes. And okay, it's part of the process. I will watch it. I will give it place, but I will continue much more quicker forward instead of delving on this bad energy and criticism that it's not something that helps us to, to continue on. So I think this is also a really important tip to our listeners, and it's it's a challenge and it's a process. It's not in a one a epiphany moment that I'm getting compassion toward myself, but understanding that this is what it means to be human. We will make mistakes, we won't be perfect, we have our vulnerabilities, but accepting them, it's an essential part of the process. What do you think about it? Absolutely, I love it. Last, not just last night, I was recording a, an episode for a summit with somebody and we talked also about self-forgiveness because it seems oftentimes so much easier to forgive other people than to forgive ourselves. So we get stuck in this self-resentment. You said being angry at yourself and then, you know, we, we feel guilty. We resent ourselves because we should have known better. <laughs> when actually there was no way to know better at the time. And we think we are stupid. We call ourselves stupid so easily. And that's really not a, a, a thing that helps us, that serves us. We, of course, need to realize that feelings like guilt, you know, emotions like, you know, guilt, fear, and all of these, they have their function, but they have a temporary function. They help us not to repeat something, maybe, in the case of guilt, right? Uh, to regret something for a moment, but then also move on from it and learn our lesson. Say, okay, wow, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, thank you for this lesson. It's been painful, but now that I'm uh, moving to the other side of it, I can see the benefit and the lesson in it, and I can take that to the rest of my life. And then really practice that self-compassion and that self-forgiveness so that you don't get stuck and paralyzed and actually not learn the lesson because you don't pay attention to the learning. And you repeat the same pattern over and over usually, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Hey, Regina, we can continue for hours, but we need to wrap up. So I want to ask you if there's any question that I didn't ask you or something that you want to share with our listeners before we... I, I, I believe that we, we touched on a lot of really valuable points and I just wanted to have this uh, beautiful conversation with you and follow your guidance here. So, yeah, I, I, and you mentioned I've, I've created some leadership frameworks and one of them is really about creating new paradigms about leadership and really becoming more people-centric, more value-driven. I know these are buzzwords at the same time, but what do they really mean? Can we really, or how can we really put people in the center of leadership? So that is definitely a big piece of the work I do with my clients and, and, and of the teachings I provide as well. So I just quickly wanted to mention that, but no, otherwise, I, you know, it's been a beautiful conversation. Thank you for that. Thank you. And it's really, it's really needed what you're doing in the world and helping people transform and better connect to themselves and bring their uh, shine and value to the world and from the self, right? And then they will be living a meaningful life and they will be happy and everybody around them will be happy and they will be in the right place. So it's so, so needed. So thank you for your, what you're doing in the world. And Eugenia, if people want to approach you, uh, where can they find you? Yes. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share this. My website is transformyourperformance.com. So again, transformyourperformance.com. I'm on LinkedIn as Regina Huber. I have a LinkedIn career growth strategies newsletter where I write weekly articles usually published on Fridays about uh, careers, career topics, and leadership topics. 
and um, I have a YouTube channel, Regina Huber. It's also just called at Regina Huber. So if you want to find it quickly, put that URL on the, on YouTube. What else can I share? My book is on Amazon. It's called Speak Up, Stand Out, and Shine, and it gives you. I call them crutches sometimes, but tips and techniques and guidance when or if you need to show up confidently or just really want to increase your presence or your, your enhance your perceived shining light, right, in, in a meeting or whatever your situation is. So it's, it's on Amazon, again, as Kindle or print. Speak up, stand out, or sh speak up, stand out and shine. <laughs> And yes, I do have a gift for our listeners today, and it is a promotion playbook. I think you are going to post the link for that, right? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Regina. It was uh, inspiring to speak with you. Yes, thank you so much for this uh, mutually inspiring conversation. I hope it did the same for our audience, and I will definitely share it with my people as well. Great. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. You're invited to subscribe to our podcast in order to know when we upload a new episode and follow us on social media. Thank you for listening. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.